What's going on, guys? So today on this Shoki Reviews, we're going to take a look at another of the Jaeger kits from Bandai. And it is the HG Gypsy Avenger from, of course, Pacific Rim of the Uprisings. Yep. So, uh, actually, I got lucky. I totally found this hidden away at Barnes & Noble. It was buried in the other Gumpla. And actually, if I did it right, you'll see the... Uh, when I found that up here on the Life of Shoki Vlogs. Um, but yeah, I've been waiting for this ever since I found the Obsidian Fury. And, well, everybody wants Gypsy. So it is what it is. So you got a nice little image of Gypsy here. You got a nice big image of Gypsy here. And it's weapon going on right there. It says HG Gypsy Avenger. You got Legendary Studios there. You got Bandai over here. You got big, giant HG logo up there. You got Bandai 2018 made in Japan. Come to the bottom, you got multi-joint structure that can recreate action poses from the film. Arm parts are now interchanged with to equip the chainsaw. Yay, I read that wrong, I don't care. The right arm with activated gravity sling is included. The glow of the dual vortex turbine can be recreated by assembling an LED unit sold separately. Um, I was 100% sure that I had a spare yellow LED, and I could not find it. If I find it before I get to the rest of the review, I will totally do it. But otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. A left arm with activated plasma caster is also included. You got to enjoy the assembly of highly detailed plastic model kit. Yes, actually. Some process closely resembles the manufacturing process of Jaeger. Yeah, it does. Okay, and you got to read up on the movie right there. Come to this side. And you've got HG Gypsy Avenger, copy of the box art, nice little glint right there in the faceplate. And come over here, you got front, rear, nippers are the ideal tools to remove parts, basically. This is all they could necessarily tell you what to do. Snap flit, glue, no worries, all the things. So this is for really, like, beginners who don't even know anything about Gunpla, so it is what it is. Focus! Okay, there we go. And I got it for twenty ninety five. Uh can't quite tell how much it is right there. It looks like it's probably it says nineteen hundred yen. So honestly, decent price. By the way, you got PP and all these things here. No um no box art thing because it's all just CG stuff. But hey, new gypsy still upside down. Well, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, guys, so here we have Gypsy Avenger, all nice and done. And this was a definitely a different kit, even from Obsidian Fury. All they have a lot of similarities, both being Jaegers and some construction aspects being very close. Very, very different kits. Of course, it is mostly molded in this kind of grayish blue. You do get this semi-metallic gray stuff here for the rest of it. Oh, I gotta turn on autofocus, which is gonna kill my lights again, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, that is literally the only two colors you get. Um, anything else you see, any of the red stripes here, those are all stickers, some of which are a huge pain, especially these here on the thigh, were incredibly hard. All the ones on the arms, well, all of the ones, these little guys here were quite different, or difficult. These were a pain. These weren't very good. Um, it has a lot of the same problems that the Obsidian Fury did, at least in the aspect of stickers. But Obsidian only had a few. Now, I did do a couple things to it. You'll notice right away there's quite a lot of gold now going on. So right here on the ribs, down here on the knee block, right through there. A few little dots of gold right here on the forearm. Back here on the spine. Same thing right in here. Same thing on little hydraulic pistons back there. It needed something to really break up the blue, and that definitely helped. Another thing I definitely did, I bought a new set of paint, and it actually had a metallic dark gray, which you can see right inside there. You can also see it here on those little spots right through there. That was all blue. This is also the same color, just to try to break up some of that gray. A little bit right through there, so you can see it. It's a little bit of touches on the face, just to make it change, or else it'd just be solid blue. Now the visor itself, I did also paint with my favorite, new favorite gold marker. 
Same thing with adding a little bit of gold right there to the chest turbines, I guess technically is what they are. The hands, in fact, are also painted in that metallic gray. You can see the difference when you look from here to there. Main problem being that these hands are completely molded in blue, and they're supposed to be gray. So, <laughs> it is what it is. You kind of have to make the best of it. Um, it is a very, very nice kit. It, the detail is ridiculous, as you guys can see. Uh, just real quick, we'll bring in the blackest black black thing ever. So we've got your Obsidian Fury, which I guess you couldn't tell in the movie is actually probably at least a head taller than Gypsy. Wow, that is actually crazy. Uh, this is the first time I've even compared them. I knew Gypsy's legs seem to be a bit stubby, but this is uh, this is kind of ridiculous, if I'm totally honest. But hey, it is what it is. You got to have the bad guy and the good guy, so to speak. So get that out of there for right now. Since this thing has so many um, accessories, let's go ahead and do articulation now and get it out of the way. The head is just on a little bitty ball joint and is actually very, very limited. You can only look down about that far. You can only rotate about that far to each side. And you can only look up about to there. He does have this bit back here on the back of the neck that is really what's limiting it. I don't know if you remove that, if it'll help you out a little bit. By the way, there's another sticker right back here. I could have just painted that, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, these little thingies back here, these little winglet guys, these do pop off. They're just there for aesthetics, but you can move them around as you like. The arms do have a nice butterfly joint that can tilt forward like so on polycaps. Can rotate the arm all the way around. Can raise them up to about there. The shoulder armors themselves, you can see this part moves independently. That part also does that, so almost like football style armor. That looks really, really nice. Uh, you got bicep rotation. Go all the way around. Double jointed elbow, although the second joint is a little bit limited, so you can get a little bit better than 90 degrees. Quit focusing on my hand. I've still, still, this is uh, only the second review with my new lighting setup. In fact, I'm going to alter it just a little bit actually why is it just now working fine okay so you do get some ridiculous ab crunch so you can come back to about there you can come forward to about there it can rotate at the hips and at the top of the waist near the chest so you can get quite a lot of movement out of that i really do dig that it's actually very good the hips are ball joints sort of, and extremely limited. You're not getting very far if splits wise. You can kick very far forward. And if you rotate things, you can kick backwards pretty far, but these guys take short steps and they're not really kicking that much. So I guess it is what it is. Double jointed knee, gets you all the way back around. So that's actually pretty neat. Um, oh yeah, I did totally hit this with some of that new metallic gray. Ankle has a rocker, forward and back, and then just ball jointed. I wish the foot itself had a little bit, because he's got this big pad of a foot. But it just, it's very limited in the stance, kind of. Because the foot can only flex so much. Yay. But, I mean, it, it's a pretty, very pretty kit, if I'm honest. All right, so let's go ahead and work on the accessories. By the way, I forgot to mount, mention the wrist star on just a ball joint right there. Now, of course, all the accessories do have to do with the wrist joints and how they come apart. But realistically, you actually pull off the entire forearm, which is kind of cool, if I'm honest. Um, let's see, where do we start? Well, let's talk with a spare hand, shall we? So we have just an open, expressive hand. For the right hand and yeah it required paint but you guys can really get a good look at that metallic it's so pretty and there's a hint of blue still sort of coming through it i like it 
I'm probably going to leave it on there, if I'm honest. So, it can really... No! You can't see me. That's a good look. Look at that. <laughs> Alright, so set that hand off to the side. Now, of course, he does have the Plasma Caster, or Plasma Cannon. As we saw with the original Gypsy Avenger, or Gypsy Danger. And you can see how the arm more or less splits open to make it happen. And you can see what I'm talking about with all the different stickers. Now, these little ones had a huge problem actually sticking on quite a lot of these. The actual plasma caster part, which is a split open hand. I did get some uh, metallic silver just to, or I'm sorry, metallic gray just to make it match. And then a little bit of gold to make it stand out. Where are you focusing, camera? There we go. And it's for the left hand, but if you really want to go there, I believe it will kind of work for both. Um, it's not super limited. You just kind of have to block out your your mind of knowing that it's a thing. So you do just have a big tab right there for the elbow. And you just line it up. This is one of the easier ones, to be totally honest. I wish it came with some kind of effect. So now you've got... The blasting effect there, and yeah, that does rotate a bit, and it can come out to there. He's like, I'm going to shoot you over there. Alright, so for the right arm, he does have another accessory as well. The, in what is at least in my opinion, i got to remember to stop pulling at the elbow. So I keep, my finger keeps hanging up right here on this little elbow bit. So... The gravity sling, which I personally I believe to be the dumbest weapon it has. Um, looks really neat. Of course, the arm completely blows open. All this stuff is what it is. Got some gold and gray paint just to break it up and to make it, just to indicate that it is the hand. Now, there is one problem with this. And it was during assembly. You can see right here how this kind of, this whole piece comes up. Slides on there has very very minor and I mean tiny hooks and I pushed it too far initially thinking this whole thing needed to set in there and damaged it ever so slightly but I ended up adding I don't remember if it's just paint I think I thickened it up with just a little bit of paint just to give it some friction but I almost got to the point that I would have to glue it but it just plugs arm plugs arm onto that and now you have plasma or uh, gravity cannon i should say gravity god dang it gravity sling so he grabs stuff with gravity and then throws it but in this case he can you know throw weapons so yay for that of course the next one is the quintessential weapon at least in my opinion so I've just pulled that off you can see i didn't have that on there super secure we want to come back to the original left hand. Go ahead and pop that out. Where did the hand go? There it is. I'm going to go ahead and swap this elbow, or this arm out with the stock one, just because he never used this the other way. And we have the chain sword arm. And it's one of the first ones that tells you to assemble, and one of the worst with stickers. So. You can see that's a little shredded right through there. That's because of how it didn't want to stick, and it was bad. A few other stickers really didn't want to stay down. After a lot of pressing, realistically, it finally went. Now, you can actually just unplug it. Just plugs in, just like that, if you really want to. Uh, but you can't use this with the normal hand, because obviously this part is popping up and out of the way now i wish they had done what the obsidian fury does where you just pop the forearm up and you pull out the plasma saws but in this case there's your left arm with the chain sword which was of course one of the coolest weapons we saw from the first movie and one of the least used weapons in this movie of course i mean he used it but it's not like it was special you know this just, there's a lot of issues with the movie. Like I never did actually review it, and I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and bring in Obsidian Fury here. 
knock that over and then you know have them kind of clashing just you know <laughs> honestly fighting with weapons that are attached to your form is not always the best way to go about things especially when one is a saw and one is just a sword but you know it is what it is it looks really good and you can get some okay poses with it like he's charging something like that I don't know I dig it he'll probably be displayed with that sword actually that's a really neat pose in and of itself <laughs> look at that that might be the thumbnail just get a picture of that all right so Last little thing you can technically do is put an LED in the chest. Now, I don't have a yellow one. I can't find it. I know I had at least one, and it is lost somewhere among the ether that is my Gundam collection. Now, I will go ahead and pull these little guys off. I do have a spare green LED just to show off how the lighting works. Because, you know, it should work one way or the other. So just go ahead and yank the entire back off. And if you're familiar with the Bandai LEDs that we've had for quite some time, this is one of the spare leftover ones from one of my double O kits, and whew, that just blinded me. And you're just going to insert it right in there. No big deal. I assume no big deal. We'll find out if it's a big deal by going ahead and attaching everything. Make sure to realign everybody. Did I not? Dang it. And if you guys are unfamiliar, these things are really, really cheap and kind of a pain in the butt. Um, I need to... I'm fairly certain it goes in just like that. Ah, there you go. It, it wasn't set in there all the way. Now it is. Alright, go ahead and slap the back back on. As good as we can, and we can at least see what it looks like with a lit up chest. Like I said, not the right color, and looking a little Iron Man esque, but with the yellow LED, it would look pretty good. Although it does seem quite a bit bright. That is one reason why I went ahead and added a tiny bit of gold right in the middle. I figured that actually would help it when it was lit up. Kind of looks cool if you turn it to the side a little. <laughs> oh well. But that's totally an option. If that's one of the only LEDs you've got, you can totally do it. Um, I will be getting a couple of LED, yellow LEDs because I want one for my RX-78 and obviously need one for here. Actually, if it's a little dim, it looks a little bit better. Oh, no, power's failing. <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, I wanted to do a quick little addendum while I was in the middle of a thing. Um, just like the Obsidian Fury, he does have a port for the stands and yeah they put it in the same unfortunate spot but you can totally adapt them to a stand and i guess that they ever gave it like the missile pack or whatever that they flew in the movie with you could give him some kind of flying abilities like so but yeah that's that's pretty much that's pretty much how that works. I guess if you really wanted to get in, like, in maybe the Superman diving pose, you could do that too. Alright guys, so final thoughts wise, it's a good kit for about 20 bucks. And, I mean, you get a buttload of the accessories that all are the weapons. And in some ways I would definitely say that this is better than the um oh what is it the robot spirits version which you know that's a figure it's not a model kit so it is what it is and before you guys ask i know it's going to be in the comments as far as i can tell i don't think you can like directly put the plasma saws on there like they did in the movie um I don't even know if you can actually just like swap the forearms. I could be wrong. I don't think it's doable. Um, the Jaegers aren't exactly the same 
you know, <laughs> very different types of creatures. Um, but yeah, good kit. I like it. Adding a little bit of detail to it will definitely improve it, in my opinion. Uh, it, the movie was what it was. I think these uh, model kits definitely capture a bit of what the movie had going for it. Though I do wish, once again, we had the swappability of weapons. Like, I have a Bracer Phoenix, but he does not come with the, like, Morningstar Mace thingy. Um, spoilers on that one. But guys, if you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and that little bell thingy. Uh, I want to thank my patrons as usual, John, Andy, Steve, Colby, and the Crow Sum for your support. If you want to become a patron here, right here on the screen. Also, if you want to buy any Shoki merch, you got all the t-shirts right here. And all of that goes to help the channel. And of course, the Lupus for Lupus contest. If it hasn't ended by the time this video comes out, it will be ending incredibly soon. But, you know, t-shirts will remain available, but I will have to make a new store and all that so that we can continually generate money for lupus awareness even after the contest is over. But thanks for watching, guys, and remember, as always, keep on building.